Just when I thought I was done with videos about lookalike album covers, viewers gave me a ton more ideas and these are super cool. Everyone knows this album. Released in November 1982, Michael Jackson's Thriller spent 37 freaking weeks at number one on the Billboard charts. It became the best selling album of all time with sales of 70 million copies worldwide. The cover featured Michael in a white suit and the gatefold reveals a tiger cub at his leg. Now, interestingly, eight months before Thriller came out, Scott Baio, who played Chachi on Happy Days, released his first solo album. Check it out. It bears more than a little resemblance to Thriller, though it didn't sell nearly as well. Scott's self-titled album barely cracked the Billboard 200, peaking at number 181, and then it disappeared quickly. Funny enough, back in 2014, Scott tweeted about the similarities between the two albums, writing, Throwback Thursday, same album cover. Mine came out first, his was better music. Thanks to viewer Egan Eagles 10 for suggesting this one. Check out the cover of Metallica's 2016 album, Hardwired to Self-Destruct. It was the band's 10th studio album and their first in eight years. It did well, topping the charts in 57 countries. The idea for the album artwork apparently came from drummer Lars Ulrich. As a wedding present in 2015, he and his wife received a picture of themselves superimposed on top of each other. Lars is quoted on Loudersound.com saying, I showed it to James at the wedding and said, one day when we do something in the future, we should get these guys to do all of us on top of each other. Viewer Nerdmind pointed out that the cover of Hardwired is also very similar to the cover of Crowbar's 1998 album Odd Fellows Rest. If you believe Lars, the inspiration for the Metallica album was a wedding photo, but there is no denying the similarities between these two album covers. Personally, I prefer the Crowbar cover. The Hardwired album cover never really did it for me. Let's talk Pearl Jam and their 2006 self-titled album. Released in May of that year, this was the band's first full-length studio release in almost four years. It debuted at number two on the Billboard 200 and eventually produced three singles, Worldwide Suicide, Life Wasted, and Gone. The album's cover art depicts an avocado cut in half with the pit still in place. Viewer Jay thought the cover also looked suspiciously close to what Circle the Cat did on their self-titled album released in 2000. That one is another avocado cover, though this one is positioned horizontally almost like a cat's eye. Pearl Jam says their cover was inspired by eating guacamole, apparently. But can two avocado covers be a coincidence? Maybe, probably, I don't know. You'll have to decide that one for yourself. If you're digging this video, I've done several other episodes talking about copycat album covers, secret messages on album covers, that kind of thing. I have these all on one playlist. I'll leave a link to that below this video. You should check it out. Channel 33. RPM. Speaking of checking things out, check out Bob Dylan's 1976 album Desire. His 17th studio album Desire sat at number one on the Billboard Pop Album Chart for five weeks, becoming one of Dylan's best-selling studio albums. On the cover, Dylan is shown wearing a light gray hat and some kind of jacket while looking sideways somewhere off in the distance. The image was taken at the Plymouth Memorial State Park in Plymouth, Massachusetts, USA. It's an iconic image, which also happens to look a lot like the cover of John Phillips' self-titled debut album released six years earlier. Shout out to viewer Ola V. Ranisto, who drew my attention to this one. If you're not familiar with John, he rose to fame as a member of the Mamas and Papas and wrote most of their songs. His 1970 album peaked at 181 on the Billboard 200, but it did generate a top 40 single with the track Mississippi. Did Dylan take notice and copy the cover shot? Who knows? But these two covers do look very similar. Let's talk about Queen's 1982 album album Hot Space. This one gets mixed reviews from fans and critics for its dance pop sound, but it did produce a major hit in the track Under Pressure, which featured David Bowie. And while it may not be the band's most highly regarded album, the cover certainly is iconic. The idea for the artwork came from Freddie Mercury. It's loosely based on Andy Warhol's screen print style, showing the four members in separate quarters. It's cool. Now check out the cover of Blur's 2000 album, The Best Of. It sure looks like a tribute to Queen, if you ask me. 
The style is a bit different than Hot Space, but the general idea is the same, kinda, isn't it? Shout out to viewer Glenn Smith for drawing my attention to this one. In my last video on copycat album covers, we talked a lot about Van Halen, including the similarities between 5150 and the self-titled debut from R&B funk band Slave. We also talked about the similarities between A Different Kind of Truth and The Commodores Moving On. Here's some more from Van Halen. Viewer C. Diddy wrote to tell me that the cover of Tokyo Dome Live, released in 2015, has the same artwork as Tyla Gang's Yachtless, which came out in 1977. And it's true, check this out. Both covers were based on a 1935 painting of the SS Normandy. At the time, the French ocean liner was the largest and fastest passenger ship in the world. I do dig the artwork on both of these records. Another viewer pointed out the similarities between Diver Down and this album from Ramstein. While they may look similar, they are actually two very different images. The object on the Ramstein cover is apparently an airplane cockpit voice recorder, while the Van Halen record depicts a Diver Down flag, which is used on the water to indicate that there is a diver below. For more on Van Halen, check out that last episode I did. I'll leave a link to it below this video. Reading through the comments of my past videos, several viewers called out Danzig for allegedly ripping off the doors with a cover of this 1990 album. The original Danzig album artwork definitely has the same vibe as the Doors' 1967 debut. It could also be an homage to the 1969 self-titled release from the Stooges. Check it out. All of these are pretty iconic albums and all the covers definitely share some common traits. All right, this next one I had no idea about. Viewer William Gainford shot me a note saying the cover of the Huey Lewis album Sports is almost identical to Being Sing You by Dr. Feelgood. Let's take a closer look. Released in 1983, Sports was the third album from Huey Lewis and the News. It reached number one on the Billboard 200 on June 30th, 1984, and ultimately spent 160 weeks on the charts. That's incredible. There are some great tracks in this record, including The Heart of Rock and Roll, I Want a New Drug, and Walking on a Thin Line. Honestly, I didn't appreciate this album as a kid, but now I absolutely love it. The cover features a photo of the band at the 2 a.m. club in Mill Valley, California, where they used to play in the early days. Now, here's be Seeing You, the fifth album from Dr. Feelgood, released back in October 1977. It peaked at number 55 on the UK albums chart, but disappeared after a few weeks. This album I am less familiar with, but there definitely are some similarities to the Huey Lewis release. As you can see, both show their respective band members hanging out in the pub, in a pub, at a club, having a good time. Coincidence? Homage? Let me know what you think. Viewer Metallion pointed out that the cover of Kiss's Creatures of the Night was parodied by the band Lordy on their single Beast Loose in Paradise. Robert Sparling weighed in to say that the cover of Guar's 2009 album Lust in Space ripped off Kiss's 1977 album Love Gun. And viewer Visions of Beyond sent me a note urging me to check out the cover of the 1993 album from Macabre called Sinister Slaughter. It's an obvious parody of Sgt. Pepper's Lonely Hearts Club Band, but featuring a collage of serial killers and mass murderers with the band mixed in. All right, 33ers, if you dig this video of a whole bunch of other episodes about album cover artwork, I'll leave a link here on the screen for you to check them out. I'll see you there in a minute. Until then, keep on spinning.